Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, I am honored today to have a special guest, Kaylee Palmer, who is a criminal investigator. And this is going to be our first show covering true crime. And with anticipation and belief that it's going to work very well, uh, the game plan is, is to do more of these. And Kaylee is one of these many Americans. Isn't this kind of something, Kaylee, that goes across the country that more and more Average Joe citizens like you are digging into these true crime stories. Absolutely, yeah. How, how did you get started? I mean, well, I mean, I mean, what made you want to get into it? I was a licensed private investigator, so it just kind of unfolded from there. I wanted to still use my research, every my knowledge, everything that I had already learned, and still help people. So I started trying to help people on cases where they were missing loved ones. Other people kind of just get. They watch Dateline. They watch 2020. They get entranced by these cases. Like us. I'm, I'm not kidding <laughs> oh, I you. am too. <laughs> on, on Friday night, laying in bed, we'll, we'll watch Dateline. And we already know what's going to happen. How goes, But we watch them anyway. We mm -hmm. get drawn in. To the, it's hilarious. Dateline sucks you in. Even before all this corona and stuff, like people would ask, well, what are you doing? I got plans. Like I, Me and my couch and my crime TV. But everybody, they think that, hey, I've seen this play out. And they think that maybe there's something missing or maybe they can discover it's that challenge. Hey, what's out there? So they've come up with this whole thing, web sleuthing, and it's just taken off. People really like true crime. I think they like to understand the psychology of things where why did someone do this? Why would, you know, it, have you heard of the Chris Watts case? The Colorado dad seemingly perfect. Right. Kills his wife, his, you know, two kids and Put his unborn in a tank. child. Yeah. And people are like, wait. If you see him on, you know, in any other situation, you think he's the perfect guy, the perfect husband, the, the perfect dad. And then, you know, all of a sudden he meets this woman and cheats on his wife and now his family's dead. Now he wants, right now he wants to get out of prison. Right. It's ridiculous. So Now, now you do this from home. Mm -hmm. um, I always say that the internet and social media, we're all photographer, we're all yes. journalists. You have access to the information. Mm -hmm. You do freedom of information requests. Yes. You, you know, uh, Kaylee, one of the things that I truly believe in is how average Joe American citizens can do so many jobs sometimes better than the real folks. I'm talking about politics. I'm talking about police investigations. There are some really wonderful police officers out there investigating, but there's also some dunce caps. Yes, yes. And you've had that in every profession right. and everything you do and the internet and what we do now has changed everything. Now, the, the, the one we're going to cover uh, in, a, in a second here is uh, Alexis Sharkey. Yes. Now tell us who Alexis Sharkey is and what this, just a, very briefly, what this case is about. So Alexis Sharkey was a 26 year old influencer who she also worked in uh, the MLM multi-level marketing business. Um, and this has been on the news. Yes. Keep going. It, it started happening around Thanksgiving so it's been a recent story. Um, she went missing the day after Thanksgiving and they actually ended up finding her deceased on the side of the road in Houston. Naked? Her, naked, yep, her, she was nude. And they found her the next day after she kind of went missing. So this happened on Saturday that her body was found by a city worker. They found her, um, he got distressed, he called his supervisor like, hey, I think there was a mannequin on the side of the road, I need you to check this out. It ended up being Alexis Sharkey. Um, she was found just a few miles away from her house and they have, um, her family lives in Pennsylvania. She had just recently moved to Houston, Texas. Um, she had been there for less than a year and she had just recently gotten married as well. When they say social influencer, um, I mean how many, uh, Instagram, I mean how many followers did she have? I mean was she Kardashian like no. or was she small time? <laughs> She was more small time. She was what they call like a micro influencer, I think is what okay. the term is. And um, at the time that she actually passed away on Instagram itself, she had a little over 20,000 followers. Now she has over 60,000. Well, what I want to do is I want to start putting up on the screen some documents and photos that you provided us. And we're just going to keep talking about this case as we go through it. Is that okay with you? Yeah, absolutely. Can we, can we put up the first? All right, this is Lisa Sharkey. Alexis Sharkey. Alexis Sharkey, my <laughs> <Yes>. bad. Alexis <laughs> Sharkey. Um, what a beautiful young lady. Yeah, absolutely. I think that How was around... How old was she? 26. 
26. Yeah. Wow. And I think that picture was taken rather recently. I'm pretty sure it was when uh, she was proposed to, and that is her fiance, or at the time. Uh, in the How old time. is he? 49. So we got a 26 for By the way, I'm just going to go ahead and say this at the outset before we go to the next picture. The husband did it. <laughs> you know, no. What's the percentage of when the husband does it? About 85% of the time is when the significant other is responsible. All right, let's go through it. Next <laughs> picture, please. It's just another picture of her. Yeah, just kind of Looking sultry. <laughs> you know, by the way, I, I, I want to make a comment about this picture. This is hilarious. I saw a picture of Tommy... Um, who's the Fox News? Tommy Lahren, okay? She put a picture up like this with a great uh, Make America Great hat, and it got like 100,000 likes. I'm like, what? It's just a freaking picture. Uh, Kaylee, I wish I was hot because you could just put a picture of your hot and you get 100 likes. I don't understand it. It's you know, not fair. A lot of people have said that she's getting a lot of the attention she's getting because she's beautiful. She was an Instagram and I think that's the truth. Well, there we like beauty. Some people think that there's a lot of things going on in the area and they're not getting attention. Like there may be a serial killer. I don't think this has anything to do with you that. Think there's a serial killer around here or about there? In Houston, yeah. Out Thank there. God, <laughs> keep the serial killers no. in Houston. What's the next photo? <laughs> what do we got here? All right, what's this? Okay, so you chose this. What 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 what's this picture showing? The big the big fuss right now on social media is the potential suspects if she was murdered or if something if foul play was involved, who might be involved. Now, I mentioned that she had just moved to Houston and when she moved there, there was a friend that she had met. Her name's Tanya Ricardo. And Tanya Ricardo is who you see on the screen right now. She, She's the one that's not in the dress. Correct. Meghan Markle's in the dress. Yes. Go ahead. So she met this Tanya Ricardo on Bumble BFF. I think it's like a Tinder for friends. Okay. She wanted to meet people in her area. Come to find out after all this transpired and Alexis is deceased, we find out that her friend who has come forward and done interviews before, she has actually been so obsessed with people before as Meghan Markle. She had eight procedures done in one day and spent, I think they said, $30,000 in surgery to look like Meghan Markle. You know, Bruce Willis wanted to look like me, and he only had to have one <laughs> surgery to look like me. Anyway, go ahead. <laughs> hey, you know what? It just, I think these, you have those people. They right. want to look like someone. They want to be someone sad so bad. Way. Yeah. It's and, sad. But it's true. It yeah. happens. And some people think that um, there's a couple so aspects of So she befriended her. Yes, and they were friends, and she was one of the last people that ever saw her alive. So she's a suspect. In my eyes. In, in, your, in my eyes, By the eyes, way, yes. it's okay to say <laughs> she's a suspect. In your opinion, suspect. It's not slander. Next photograph. So then you have... Just another one. Yeah, you have Alexis, who's just this beautiful girl, and she had more of the following. She had more of the... What people think Tanya might have wanted, right? You know, it's it's a ah. Thing. So you think you 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 got a theory here mm -hmm. that she could be maybe jealous of her? Yes, I do. You know, and I'm not the only one. There are a lot of people out there that think that might be a possibility. I want to I want to share this with you. I have a uh, I have two beautiful daughters, and one of them, Charlie Ann, um, she looks a little bit like her, the same age. You know, she's she's 30, but but I I see this, and I think my God, some if something like that happened to my daughter, I would just I couldn't live with my it would just oh, be yeah. awful next photo care please. it's awful yeah all right so, now what is this document here so now we have the other side of things or as we talked about you said the husband did it it's always you know? the husband 85 <laughs> yeah. percent of the time well we have evidence pointing to the fact that this man had even lost when he was married before he had children and back in it was 2007 to 2009 i think the time they were getting divorced him and his ex-wife and there were a few things that transpired that you'll see on the screen um, over the next few slides that they talk about what he had done and to his ex-wife and the things that he had done to actually lose. What were some of the things that he did? <laughs> well, he ended up sending. We can say anything on this show. He sent private pictures to her employer, to his ex-wife's employer, which is at the forensics office. So I can only speculate on what those photos were, but he was trying to hold that against her and hold her hostage to his ways and what he wanted. So he ends up trying to also get the kids so on you his think, side. So you think this was some of that revenge porn or like that type of thing? Yeah, and you know, a lot of people are like, well, why would this man... By leave? the way, that is so messed up. It is, yeah. I mean, I mean, you know, when you think about a spouse's boyfriend, girlfriend dating, to, to, to violate that privacy 
is just despicable. Yeah, you trust them at the time you're with right, them. Right, right. And they it's betray not cool. that. It no. violates every man yeah. code <laughs> there is to do that to a woman. Well, it shows you what kind of a person they are Absolutely. in reality. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. They just have all of these things that are coming so out. So he that, did not get custody. He has to have supervised? Mm -hmm. Wow. All the things that he did led up to him even having his sister and his mother having to supervise his visits with his children. And if I'm not mistaken, his daughter is about, one of his daughters is about the same age as Alexis. Well, how old is he? 48, I already asked you this. He's 49. 49. She would be, I think she's yeah, around 25, 26. Yeah, that's why he'd have yeah. children. And this happened just a little over 10 years ago. So she was 16, maybe 15. And he had to have supervised visits. With like, a 16, that's weird. Yeah, you know, ne I mean. Next, next. She, she couldn't be much older than that. All right, we can skip that one. That's another picture of her looking sultry. Now, what's this? Update investigation of female found deceased, 1000 Red Hall Lane. This is all we have. This is literally all we have that the police have given us. So all of these theories and ideas have come from. Her real name, Alexis Lee Robinot. She had just gotten married. I don't think she actually legally changed her name. To Sharky. To Sharky, gotcha. yeah, yeah. Now, have you done a Freedom of Information Act request for the Houston Police Department? I have, and I've also requested her autopsy report. Um, the 911 calls for her being reported missing. I've requested any of the body cam. So we'll get to do another show when you get all this stuff. Yes, yes, we Keep will. going, what else? Yeah, so um, a lot of people, why I brought some of the things up about the ex-husband, or uh, the husband, but the ex in the divorce proceedings we were looking at. We're gonna solve this crime yes. of Lisa Sharkey <laughs> right here on the Bulldog Show. <laughs> we are. Go ahead, Kaylee. And so I brought those up because a lot of people were like, well, why would this man do this to his wife? Why would he leave her nude on the side of the road? Well, if he's willing to so provide, humiliating. Yeah, and well, if he's willing to humiliate his ex-wife, the mother of his children, by sending pictures, private pictures to her employer. Well, I mean, I see what do. you're <laughs> saying. You would think, why would a man, if he murdered her, leave her naked? Mm -hmm. well, a lot of reasons. One, that he's a deviant anyway. Two, uh, to throw off the uh, path of him, maybe, you know, sure. or to th a final humiliation. Yeah, so, and there's Her a lot. poor parents. I know, yeah, and they're in Pennsylvania. They didn't even find out about this. So the last time anybody really talked to her was about 6 p.m. on Friday. But that was from the Tanya lady. That's her account. She saw her on Thursday at Thanksgiving. Allegedly, this is the timeline, the shortest timeline I can give you. Alexis went to Tanya's for Thanksgiving after she had a mini breakfast Thanksgiving with her husband. Her friends, she has two groups of friends, one with Monet and the others with like Tanya's group. She hung out with, I think, Tanya and some of her friends for Thanksgiving. And about a month ago, she had told him that she was abused by her husband and she was so we so they're saying that husband abused her mm -hmm. All right, but go this ahead. is also the one lady who people are questioning right she's the only one saying that she women don't commit murders unless they're black widows uh, you know I know I watch Dayline women kill too go ahead <laughs> they do right and um, so you just have they are they're just, they're <laughs> You anyway, gotta be careful. Anyway, so so who so so I, I I'm sorry about interrupting your timeline. No, that's so okay. she saw them one friends at Thanksgiving. Go on. She saw them on Thanksgiving and then she allegedly went home. They were supposed to hang out on Saturday and they talk all the time. Alexis has her phone on her hip all the time. She always responds right away. Well she responded apparently at six PM on Friday to Tanya and that group of friends. They were just kind of confirming plans or whatever for Saturday. Saturday comes around, they didn't hear from her. So they kind of started to freak out because Tanya says if anything ever happened to her, that Alexis would be the first person she'd call. She'd pick up right away. Some people even think that maybe Tanya was bisexual and might have had an interest in Alexis. Yeah, it happens, especially that There's generation. Another, that generation, they might have mm -hmm. been lovers too. There's another side to that. Maybe right. why she might be interested in right. harming her if right. she did. Right. So Jealousy there, plays mm -hmm. a part, men and women. Absolutely. So there could be the Instagram, the fame, the, I guess if you want to call it fame. Um, oh, I guess as, as of right now, though, we don't have any evidence of what the forensic evidence is, such as fingerprints, cell phone records, so forth and so on. No, I had heard, um, again, this is just hearing the husband hasn't said a lot, but I had heard that maybe she had left her phone at home and there there had been rumors that she had been in an altercation with him before she left the home on Friday. The story is she left the home on Friday shortly after that 6 p.m. text to, to Tanya. Um, so when was she last seen? 
We know that Tanya last saw her at Thanksgiving on Thursday, and her husband when is, says... When, when was she reported missing? On Saturday morning. So we don't know where, where she was Friday. No, we know. What we are told is that she went home sometime on Thursday. Husband Tom, did it. The husband says she was under the influence of something, and he didn't want her to leave on Friday in her car. He didn't want her to drive. Uh, so she left her phone. Is what, But I don't know if she left her phone or not. Husband did it. And he said... <laughs> There, you know, I, statistics prove that that's likely. I mean, that, that, that she came home from Thanksgiving and Friday missing. In fact, if you remember, remember the Watts case. Oh, she's missing. Uh -huh. I don't know where she is. And then he said, we're going to get a divorce. Well, he's denying any of that. But she told her friends a month ago. So she ago, told her friends she was going to get divorced. He's denying there was going to mm -hmm. be a divorce. And she said a month ago when they were having issues that she would wake up in the bathroom, I think, naked, because he would strangle her oh my and God. make her pass out and she would wake up. Now, if she was strangled, the autopsy says, um, which is on one of these pictures, the autopsy says, Can we go to the point, next picture? Oh, they that's don't just have, more of that. Father encourages children to be angry at the mother. This is the prior divorce. Yeah. To be disrespectful and to use forceful and vulgar language to force the mother to agree. Wow, next one, please. So this right here is the last status update we've had on her autopsy, that it's still pending. Okay. Um, toxicology, by the way, yeah. they rush them, but toxicology can take a month. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, sometimes it can take longer. They haven't said they're waiting on toxicology, but that's what I, I mean, we're Manner left to assume. Manner of death pending. Yeah. They said that there were no visible signs, no visible signs on her that would cause her death. Now, she could have been smothered, and you might not physically Correct. See, you have to read between the lines. They didn't say... We know she wasn't harmed, but they said they're not ruling anything out, and there were no physical wounds on her that would prove that. She could be smothered, and you don't see. Right. You so don't only see that in, in the inside with the lungs. Yeah, and she could have been, even if she was drugged or she had, people are assuming maybe she overdosed. Maybe she, you know, was partying, mm -hmm. and maybe that happened, and someone got scared, and they dumped her body. Well, she could have overdosed willingly or unwillingly. She right. could have been poisoned. There's, right. You're there's right. There's so many things, you know. You just... This is all we're left with. Ne so next, we, next, is there another one we got? Just more of his outrageous Outrageously claims. Outrageously involved, yeah. act against the mother, he, threat. Next one. He has gone to the extreme to torment the ladies in his life. And per the divorce documents, I had only known of two marriages, the one to Alexis and the one prior um, with his, his children. Well, in the divorce documents, it says that he had a current wife at that time. That was in like 2009 or so. Well, it wasn't Alexis. They didn't know each other. So this so is So he's might have been married wife. more. Yeah, I don't know how many times he's been married, but... Do we have a picture? What, what's three. next picture? I think we got some pic... There he is! There's the man of the hour. There's yeah. the man! <laughs> he looks like a killer to me! <laughs> <laughs> Everyone is definitely uh, speculating. Well, that's a picture of better times, I guess. Yeah. Do we have any more pictures? Oh, is that, the, is that him at the wedding? That's when she was getting sized for her dress, I think, for the wedding. Pretty um, dress. Yeah, and a lot of people were saying he's so controlling. Do you see him in that picture? He's even yeah, controlling we, what she wears. Most men and, aren't involved in picking out the wedding dress. Right, I've seen, you know, I've heard that. And maybe it's because, though, also, she got married right around the time that she was moving. She had moved from Pennsylvania to Colorado. Her family lived in Colorado. This all happened in Colorado. This happened in uh, Texas. She Texas, moved, my, my bad, yes, no, Texas. She, well, she moved around a lot um, okay. because her job allowed her to, and she loved to travel. Where did she work? She worked for Monet. Um, the hair it, the hair thinning products or whatever, okay. they, you see them on TV. Okay. They've been in the news lately. Now they're trying to turn it that maybe she worked for a uh, that, By a the way, I'm glad company. you brought that up. <laughs> Is Monet your typical pyramid scheme? That's what they're saying. Like Amway and these other products. You know, that maybe she got sideways with them. But but they make it sound like pyramid scheme being evil. We all know that the Amway is a legal pyramid scheme. Right. Yeah, you know, people are thinking that, and they have a lot My of daughter life. sold hair products for some, or skincare products for some company, I forgot. And it was that pyramid thing. Yeah, and you know, some of them, like I know people who are very successful. Right. But I think they're the 1%. Right. And a lot yeah, of those the one percent are successful. <laughs> though a lot of people, they put all of their money, all of their savings. They these a lot of these companies, they they think it's a good idea for you to put your um, product on credit cards. Well, then you don't have the ability to pay off your credit cards. Right. It stresses you out. We go back to the Shanann Watts thing. A lot of people are comparing the two, saying there's been a lot of murders lately that have involved people with MLMs, and now New York Post is saying, okay, was this whole Monet thing a pyramid scam? And they're running with it. Um, yeah, but I, what, how would that relate to her murder? 
doesn't I, doesn't I don't see the connection there. I think a lot of people are thinking that maybe it transformed who she was as a person. Maybe she wanted the um, ability to be out there more, and maybe Tom didn't like that. And what we were talking before, she's beautiful. Right. People are going to hit on her everywhere she goes. Right. Maybe he was just over it. Do, I mean, do we have any more photos? That Houston is the Police last one Department we have. detectives are the scene of a woman found deceased. That's just the report from the yeah. Houston Police Department. And that was at 10:35 on the 28th, which was Saturday. Um, she, we know that she was. Oh, at I her see. Friends. That's a good thing. 10:35. Yeah, that's good. She was at her friend's house. We know for Thanksgiving on Thursday, or at least that's what it said. Um, we know that th there was a body found on Saturday morning. And another thing I think that's kind of freaking people out is we were her we heard that. Tom, Tom even said in himself, allegedly, that... Tom Sharkey, the husband. The husband, yeah, that he identified his wife at the morgue on Sunday, I think it was, the day after her body was found. And he didn't really go anywhere to help find her or do anything. It was kind of the mom, the friends, all of that. They were the ones that went husband to the police. Husband did it. And, <laughs> well, then all of a sudden her body is found and he's like wants nothing to do with it he's being very evasive he told one of the news agencies locally not to t not to contact him again he said just don't contact me you know i'm not being mean it's just i'm broken okay yeah, i know like, he's tw <laughs> do we got any more pictures more allegations uh, of anything else got another one we've already seen enough of that just I'll keep that one up there just for a second you know one of the things that that's the last picture we have you know one of the things you can take it down. One of the thing, thank you. One of the, one of the things that I think um, is funny how he's he's posting things. And he's tw I don't know if it's been Twitter or Facebook. How much he loved her and she was going to outlive him because she was competitive and blah blah blah. And I'm thinking this is all a bunch of malarkey. He it was on Facebook and then he made his profile private after that and said he was receiving death threats. What does he do for a living? You know, I have heard a few different things. I've heard that he's in the oil industry. That's big in Texas. I've also heard, for the first time I heard yesterday, he was a garbage man. I hadn't seen any of that yet. Nothing wrong with a garbage man. Not at all, no. But that gives <laughs> you a lot a of opportunities to, <laughs> right. to dispose of evidence. That's a good point. So it Never depends. thought about that. Yeah, it gives you, I mean, you're at a lot of different stops. I've watched enough of these shows, and if I ever go into killing business, what I'm going to do is I'm going to be like Ozarks. I'm going to buy a funeral home with an incinerator. <laughs> Right you now. like Ozarks? Yeah. You know, I've been told to watch it a bunch you of times. You don't watch Ozarks? Oh, no, my. I know. You I know, watch I know. Ozarks, you learn how to run a criminal enterprise. There you go. There's a lot of those now. You, you know? got to be Marty. <laughs> They're giving you ideas. They're putting ideas in So what head. is the very latest, as we wrap up here, what's the very latest being reported by the public news agencies? Nothing. No. Okay. There's literally nothing. But you're going to stay on top of this as an amateur or professional criminal investigator sleuth. Absolutely. Now, you're, you're married, got kids. One child. One yep. child. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you do this on the side. Yes. Well, that's fun. Yeah. I hope we solve this on the Bulldog Show, Let's Kaylee. Let's do it. Let's do it. I mean, so you just <laughs> keep the way of you come back. But I find this intriguing. And you know what? I know this is sweeping across the country. Everybody mm -hmm. loves these stories. It's why the news covers from gavel to gavel people like the, the murder trials. And when they come, you know, the, the, the Dooley case. Yes. Um, the bathroom drowning case, which, by the way, he did it. Right, you know what? Ryan Whitmer. You know, I Ryan was, Whitmer. I was 100%. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. I actually, I know someone who knows him. Yeah, I know. The, I know someone who knows him. But uh, I was dead set on he didn't do it. I watched a show a year or so ago. And it was two, I think there were former criminal defense attorneys who were trying to help the man. They were like, look, give us five pieces of evidence that we can help you. We can get you out of here if we can prove this. None of them panned out. Well, Not a single one. Well, here, here's why, you know, Ryan Widmer, he, he never testified. He had three chances to take the stand. Not one, not two, three chances. He's still trying and to get he, out. And he didn't, he didn't take the stand. I mean, you just, if you're innocent, you need to testify. And I can understand and, the first or second. And, and I can tell you right now, David Dooley, the law, lawyers, I can tell you right now, lawyers are stupid. I can't tell you how many times lawyers will tell, oh, you can't testify, you can't testify, because maybe something doesn't all add up. People don't expect everything to add up perfectly. Right. They want to hear from the person. And even though you're innocent until proven guilty, Kaylee, 
people assume that if you're not testifying, they're like, eh. Because if you're innocent of a crime, aren't you shouting from the mountaintops? Yeah, you know. and You're shouting from the mountaintops. Absolutely. I didn't do this. <laughs> yeah. No, I agree. And that's what people are saying about this, you know, Tom Sharkey. He's damned if he do. He's damned if he doesn't. Because yeah. he had the lawyers up. And then people are like, oh, why did he get a lawyer? Why is he? And then, or he talks to the cops. He's like, well, why is he being so helpful? Well, it doesn't mean <laughs> that guilty people try to act innocent. But Absolutely. I'm just saying, if you are innocent, you do anything and everything. And it's also the weird reaction, you know, yeah. the Dateline reaction, like, like the Watts case. How he acted was pretty weird. You know, how do you act? Uh, for by, sure. the way, by the way, I, I keep saying one more question. I got one more question. Yeah. How does anybody kill their children? I, that's the thing for me. You know what? What the F? Domestic violence, I understand. I've been a we, part of it on We do. We side. understand like, domestic yeah. violence. You, spouses get children? pissed off at each other. Yeah, but your, your children. Own children? Mm -hmm. your that's own messed children. up. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you, Kaylee Palmer, Thanks for so coming much. in. we got to do this again. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, we will stay on the Lisa Sharkey story because everybody else is. And Alexis. Alexis. <laughs> I keep calling her Lisa. I'm going to wear green every time I Alexis come in. Alexis Sharkey. This can't is, take us anywhere. Yeah, don't wear green. This is the Bulldog. <laughs> every dog has their day. Have a great day. Thank you, Kaylee. Thank you.